Well, it's a cold, rainy, even somewhat slushy, snowy day here in southwest Utah. And Shadow and I are heading out on a 1,000 mile road trip. We want to stay ahead of the winter storm here. And you can see it's already dropping snow on the higher elevations. So we're heading out to the outskirts of Dallas, Texas. Why? I'll tell you about it on the way. But there's a clue. There's nothing in the back of my pickup. So why are we going to Dallas, Texas? Well, for those of you that have watched my channel, you'll know that I've had on the back of this pickup an inflatable portable topper by Getflated that I built into a camper because this channel is dedicated to predominantly astrophotography and rock hounding and camping. Astrophotography where we go out to remote places, spend the night, imaging galaxies and nebulae or we're out searching for chalcedony and agates and jaspers all of which require a place to stay and and retreat to to stay warm and that inflatable topper served its purpose for well over a year but i've been saving my pennies and there's something pretty exciting that we're going to pick up now in addition to not having anything in the back of the pickup I'm also missing my little side buddy, Shadow. I'm still speaking in plural because I'm so used to it, and he's with me here in spirit. But this is a long, hard road trip, over a thousand miles there and back with no stops other than necessary stops. And that stresses him out. Uh, he gets very excited in the car. He loves to go on journeys, but four straight days of just hard driving is too much for him. It stresses him out. I don't want to put him through it. So my youngest son is watching him and taking care of him. He's in good hands. I miss him already, but the most important thing is I know he's okay. So we've got a long ways to go. I'm going to tell you a little more about what we're going to pick up on the way, but I got to get some, uh, some miles behind me. Well, I think we're getting ahead of the storm. It's part of this big, huge storm system that's hitting California right now, Southern California, causing all kinds of flooding, and it's made its way now to Nevada and Southern Utah. So I think I'm beating it. So all's good there. So we're on our way to Dallas, Texas, because I'm getting a brand new Capri Cowboy Camper. Really excited about it. It's perfect for what I do. On the way, there's gonna be some amazing scenery and some really cool places I'm going to share them with you. I'll tell you more about the camper on the way, but for the moment, let's keep getting some miles behind us. Well, we've gone 145 miles and I needed to stretch my legs a little bit. It is absolutely beautiful here. Let's see here. You are here. So we have come from St. George and then through Kanab and then we made our way. Looks like that's where we are entering. We're in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument area. So this should be quite scenic as we drive through here. And then we'll hit the Utah-Arizona border. We'll drop down here below Lake Powell and then we'll cut over crossing the Navajo Reservation. It's quite windy out there. Really windy out there. There's very little traffic. We're encountering very few cars in either direction and it's beautiful so no complaints and we beat the storm Well, we're currently crossing the Navajo Nation or the Navajo Reservation. The Navajo Reservation is 
over 17.5 million acres in size. It is bigger than 10 of our U.S. states. There are approximately 400,000 members of the Navajo Nation, and about half of them live on the reservation. It takes hours to cross it, and we're just crossing a part of it. Well, we've been driving for a couple hours on the Navajo Nation. I just stopped to take a break and also to see if maybe I might run into uh, Gandalf or Frodo on their way to Mordor. Is that not just really cool looking? That definitely has to be Mordor. It's really cool, it's really beautiful. Really. I pulled over to the side of the road again because Mordor is looking even more Mordorish. Look at that. That has to be Mordor. Wow, these skies out here are spectacular. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Navajo Nation is huge. It takes hours to cross it, and we are taking hours to cross it. But we're making progress. All right, let's keep pushing forward. So I just want to make sure I get off the res by nightfall because I don't want to run into a skinwalker. You ever heard of a skinwalker? You think I'm joking? Google it. Skinwalker. It's a real thing. It's a form of witchcraft that's practiced by a very small minority of the uh, Navajo and Hopi people. And it's greatly shunned by the majority, so I don't want to cast the wrong light on the Navajo people. It's a very, very small minority, but it's a form of witchcraft that goes way, way back. And um, through some rituals, when they're practicing it, they can transform themselves and take on the shape of an animal, like a wolf or a mountain lion or something. And there are a lot of stories of like somebody driving across the reservation and a skinwalker in the form of like a wolf comes running up right alongside them. They're, they're driving like 65 miles an hour. It'll keep pace and look at, look at them right through the window. I mean, there's a lot of these kind of stories. So I haven't encountered one myself, but I've talked to people that swear they have. So I'd like to get across the reservation before nightfall. Well, I finally hit a town and I have cell coverage for the first time in, I swear, an hour and a half. I haven't had cell coverage. So this is good. I was able to make some calls and catch up on a few things. I don't know the name of the town I'm in, but I know I'm in New Mexico and I know I'm still on the reservation. All right, we're gonna keep pushing ahead. It's starting to get a little dark. I gotta beat the skinwalkers. Well, I pulled over to stretch my legs. I don't know if I'm still on the res or not, but it snowed. You can see the snow. I've got about ooh, an hour and 20 minutes before I am to Albuquerque, so I wonder if there's any skinwalkers in there. What's that? Mysterious. Okay, we're off the res, and I've got 68 miles to go to make it to where I'm staying tonight, my friend's house in Albuquerque. So, I'm just gonna keep pushing ahead. Well, it's the following morning, about 7.15 a.m. 
I'm getting an early start. I've got 900, I'm sorry, 647 miles to drive today. Yesterday was 540, so it's a little bit of a longer day. It is a beautiful day though. I mean, it's cloudy and stuff like that, but it's still spectacular. I mean, I don't know, I love weather. Weather to me is just really awesome. As long as it doesn't make the road conditions too bad, and I don't think it will. So, all right, wish us luck. Well, we've got a long drive ahead of us, and so this might be a good time to tell you a little bit about Capri Camper and what I'm going to go pick up, which is a Capri Cowboy Camper. So Capri Camper, has been in business since 1969. It's owned by two guys, Pete and Tyson, and they're the guys that answer the phone if you call, and they'll spend the time with you and talk through. They make their campers custom order. They make more campers for the rodeo community than any other camper company, and they're just really, really well made, handmade. Each one's handmade to order. You can custom make it the way you like it. They have several different models, and then you decide what you want interior wise and so forth and maybe a few things exterior and I just love the look it is a retro look an aluminum kind of a diamond patterned exterior but the interior also is really cool they're usually you know wood mine's pine that I ordered and it has kind of a rustic cabin feel to it this is really a significant upgrade for me from what I've had in the past which was my inflatable portable topper that I love and that I built a little camper out, you know, I, I built out a camper um, using that topper and it worked real well, but uh, it's time for an upgrade for me. Okay, we are in Fort Sumner, New Mexico, and there's a Billy the Kid Museum. I'm gonna go in and check it out. We gotta take breaks, right? the second person in today all right what can we learn about Billy the kid he looks a little crazy doesn't he great big arrowhead collection there's old Wyatt Earp shoot out at the OK Corral Sheriff Garrett trailed Billy to Pete Maxwell's house at Fort Sumner where he killed Billy the Kid in July of 1881. So you see kids, a life of crime does not pay. Only photo known to exist that has both Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. That's Billy the Kid up there. And then Pat Garrett is up on the far left. Posters of movies made about Billy the Kid. Born in Hell's Kitchen, New York City, 1857. In Arizona territory, after a few killings, kid hit out in Mexico. I wonder how many people in total Billy the Kid killed. Billy the Kid's rifle. He was literally just a kid. Place is a little bit of a maze. I got myself lost. I'm not sure how I get out of here. This is the maze from hell. You can't find your way out. It reminds me of the Eagles song, Hotel California. I think this is the exit. That was kind of fun. I 
Okay, it is 7.50 p.m. It's been a long drive. So far, the total mileage on this trip has been 1,125 miles in two days. And tomorrow's a big day. I get the camper installed first thing in the morning, so I wanna have a clean pickup. So I'm going through the car wash. Well, it's the following morning. We have driven 1,128 miles so far. And my mileage, average mileage is 18. We'll reset the gauge and we'll find out what the mileage difference is when we have a trailer with the wind resistance and the weight on the back. So we're just about 15 minutes away from Capri Camper. Okay, I'm in the office. We're just doing the paperwork. And Pete, one of the two owners, I just run to uh, take a phone call. And there's the truck. They're putting on the camper right now. And once I've done with the paperwork, we're gonna go out and take a look at it. Okay, the camper has been installed and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It fits right into the bed of the truck, comes out a little ways. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the tailgate on for the time being. Eventually I might change that about, uh, come up with a different configuration, but there's a little AC unit. And here you go. Just like in the pictures. I've got the table down at the moment. They recommend having the table down when you're driving. Got a propane heater. And then I thought this was kind of interesting on how they build them. This one here that's being built, you can see the frame. It's all wood construction, two by twos. And then after they run the wiring, they pack it with insulation. So these are super insulated, great for cold weather, which is a lot of what I do. I think it looks great. It comes with jacks. The jacks are in the, on the floor in my truck. So I can take it on and off. So I'm gonna get out of their hair because they've got one after another after another scheduled and um, I will show more of it on the road. And now I'm on my way back to St. George, Utah. We're in New Mexico. And I pulled over to the side of the road here because I wanted you to see how it actually looks. And I think it just looks spectacular. And I've already spent a few hours in it in the cold and the heater works just fantastic and it's dry. It's really dry, it doesn't uh, put uh, moisture into the um, the atmosphere and for a propane heater that's you know I'm used to like the Mr. Buddy which will you know put a lot of humidity into the air this one doesn't so it's a different technology and I'll help put what it is down below because I can't remember off the top of my head but let's take a look inside so I like to sit right here I've already figured out this is my little spot <laughs> where I can use the table, set up a laptop, whatever, have access to the heater right there, the kitchen right here. And then if I have anybody else over, you know, they can sit there. But this table here, as I mentioned, folds down real easily. And then that cushion here fills that spot. And that is now a bed, a bed area. So that's how that works. Now, this is, a, huge you know it, it's fitting literally in the bed of my pickup and it doesn't have a cab over so this is really what I wanted a place where I could just come in retreat when I'm doing hours and hours of deep space astrophotography at night or if I'm just camping you know stay warm or cool it's got an air conditioner it's got a fan up there as well you know I'm already starting to 
put together plans of how I kind of want to, you know, make this my own little home away from home. And I'll, I'll do all that. Those are all the fun things. It takes time. But I think we're off to a good start. Now I just got to make my way all the way to St. George. What do you think, little shadow? What do you think? You're making a mess of the pillows. I think he likes our new camper. We made it home. I made it home. Shadow's excited to see me, and I've been very excited to see him. I've started already to do a few things just to kind of make the camper my little home away from home. You know, I added a little soap dispenser and a paper towel dispenser, a little cutting board, a little hand towel, a few little pillows to, you know, kind of decorate. Here, Shadow, let me put the blanket on this, or the towel on this to keep you from... Uh, you're going to mess up those pillows no matter what. This is what the bed looks like when it's, you know, the table's down. It's made into a bed. And that's what Shadow looks like when he jumps on the bed. <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot of fun in this camper. I want to thank Pete and Tyson for helping to make this possible. This is not sponsored. This is a legitimate purchase. But I'm looking forward to many years of some great adventures, as is Shadow. He's ready to go right now. He's already messing it up. He's ready to go. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and join us on future adventures of Shadow. Thanks for coming along.